Hello! Sorry. How's it going, folks? Menacing music right now. I've got my tea going today, my Cleveland Browns mug. I'm unfortunately a Cleveland Browns fan. They've had some good years recently, but... Um... It is an overcast Saturday, where I am from. Um, so... I'm feeling very cozy. I am a little bit under the weather, um, but that's okay. I got my tea. We're going. So here we, last time we were here, we were in Sylph Company. We defeated our rival. Um, we have our friend Titus here. I'm just going to do a little team recap. We have our friend Boney, the Marowak, rocking that bone club. We have our new friend Copter, the Aerodactyl which I'm very excited about. Very powerful new member of the squad. Um, we have my beloved wife here at level 33. Um, rocking that sleep powder. We have Keith Angel, the Gyarados. Um, looking great with that new surf. And we have finally our friend, hello, Loctest. Thank you for being here. Um, we have our friend Eve the Jolteon, rocking that Thunderbolt. Um, okay. So today, the main goal here will be to finish up some battles here, get some good items. I think this little room has one specific TM that we're really going to be looking for. Hmm. Yes, joke. Hello. Um, we're going to go into Copter to get that fly on him. And yes... That would have been neutral in later gens. Yeah, always very weird to me that they decided to make Karate Chop not a fighting move originally. That doesn't make any sense. It's literally a Karate Chop. It is a fighting move. <laughs> very weird. Uh, okay, good. He just had the one Machoke. He had pushover. Carbos, great item. Gonna increase some speed on somebody. Rare candy, another great item. And then finally, I think this is it. Yes, TM26. I don't know who can learn this, but TM26 is Earthquake. This is one of the best moves in the game. It is a... Oh yeah, it would just be Boney. Um, I'm gonna hold off, because Boney's got Bone Club that's really rocking, really rocking it right now. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we're going to teach it to Boney. Um, because this is just a more powerful Bone Club. And this is what the squad is going to look like. I'm going to have it right in the top slot there. Forgot Lear and... Learned Earthquake. Um, so, Earthquake is a 100 base power, 100% accuracy move. Which is, like, bonkers good. Um, I, I do not remember at all where we are in Sylph here. Um, oh, hello. Hi. But fun fact, Dig, which is a TM we got earlier in the game, is actually the same power as Earthquake. It just takes two turns to use it, which I hate. Um, ah, yes, Rolling Kick is a nice powerful move on Titus. Lovely. Oh, nice. Got a miss as well. Um, So Earthquake's definitely one of the best moves in the game. It's kind of up there with Thunderbolt, which we have... Oh, I was not even paying attention. That's fine. Kind of up there with Thunderbolt, which we have on our Jolteon. Surf and, like, Ice Beam. I would say, like, Surf, Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Earthquake. Those are probably the five best moves in the game. Um, there are more powerful moves, but they're not as accurate. Um... Those are the most powerful moves that uh, are still accurate. Um, okay, so from here, I think we should be good to maybe start making our way toward the end. Um, because I believe we fought just about every... Or just a lot of the trainers in here. But... There are way more trainers to level up on if we need to. We'll get that quick nap. So if we weren't with us last stream, 
we cleared out a lot of trainers. Yeah, our last stream was Tuesday on Pokemon Day. We cleared out a lot of trainers and we defeated our rival over here. Our rival kind of waits right where that guy is and then when you hop out here, he jumps you. Um, so if you didn't catch that, you can watch the last stream on YouTube if you want. You can watch any stream that we do here, I will post on YouTube later. So if you want to catch up to where we are, um, you can do that. Um, it's still the same, Silver Cave Gaming. And we'll keep Titus in the front. And here, Jesse and James, our friends Jesse and James. We had the last appearance of Jesse and James. How sad. Um, actually, I'm going to use that Carbos that we saw earlier. Oh, and Calcium. Let's go. Who needs to be faster? Ooh, Titus. Because he's a real heavy hitter, but he doesn't have a lot of HP. Um, Calcium, I'm going to give that... Last appearance of Jesse and James in any Pokemon game? You are correct, actually. Um, Jesse and James was really a... They're not even called Jesse and James in this game. Um, I'm going to give this Calcium to Eve to really use that Thunderbolt. Uh, they're not even called Jesse and James. <laughs> Rip, fellas, you're right. Um, they're just called Rocket, I think. But... This game was designed to be specifically an anime counterpart, so... They appear in this game, but no other ones. So let's see. Here's our boy Giovanni. The president and I are discussing a vital business proposition. Keep your nose out of grown-up matters. Or experience a world of pain. You are an adult man. You're like 50. This is weird. Um, Nidorino. Um, so Nidorino is not a ground type like the Evolve 4 Nidoking. He just a poison type. So I'm gonna hit with that strength because fighting moves won't be super effective. Uh, will be not very effective, rather. Um, so yeah, I had a... Oh, lovely. I had a comment on YouTube talking about, like, you were so underleveled for Koga, that had me stressed. And I'm like, you are absolutely right. We were underleveled for Koga. I just really wanted to use Surf so we could go get Aerodactyl. Oh, Persian is perfect. We're going to stay in with Titus and use our super effective rolling kick. Um, and that is the beauty of the mid-game of Generation 1. You can kind of do whatever you want to do. You can fight a ton of trainers and get your levels, like, super good. For the rest of the gym leaders, you can try to get Surf early, you can try to go through Sylph Company early, um, you can do whatever. Rhyhorn, we're going to go into my wife. Because again, Rhyhorn is a rock ground type, and it is kind of a shame because it's such a cool Pokemon, but if you use just one little grass or water move on it, it just pretty much insta-kills it. There you go. So if you're playing through this game and you're like, I just can't beat Rhyhorn, do that. That'll do the trick. Um, and Nido Queen. This is what the female Nidorina will evolve into. And yeah. She a girthy girl. At least in this game. But no, Nido Queen's awesome. Nido King and Nido Queen are two just like really kind of like staple designs for early Pokemon. Really kind of like the kaiju-esque um, Pokemon that were... And Rhydon as well, which we'll see later. If we, I don't think we've seen a Rhydon yet. Easy. Easy, Giovanni. You ain't nothing. Oh, picked up 70 extra bucks from Payday. But, while we have seen Jesse and James for the last time. I don't know if that's the last time we'll be seeing Giovanni. So, we have successfully driven Team Rocket out of Sylph Company. Not bad for a 10 year old. Let's, um, we'll save here. And this guy, <laughs> he has a funny line. Thank you for saving Sylph. I will never forget you saved us in our moment of peril. I have to thank you in some way. Because I am rich, I can give you anything. Ain't that the truth? 
Anyone rich out there, just give me money. Please? Pretty please? You won't miss it. Um, here, maybe this will do. Ash got a Master Ball. Master Ball. Very important item. Um, you can't buy that anywhere, it's true. You only get one in the game and this is it. It's our secret prototype Master Ball. It will catch any Pokemon without fail. You should be quiet about using it though. Um, and I think that's pretty much what Giovanni was trying to get out of the president. Um, was probably like the plans for the Master Ball. Um, because the Master Ball is extremely powerful and it can literally catch any Pokemon without trying at all. Because as you've seen in this game, we've had to kind of like whittle some Pokemon down. Ah, oh, Sword Stance. Yeah, we don't have any Pokemon that learn that. Oh, oh yeah, we do, but we don't want to do it on my wife. That's not, that's not the set we want to run. Um, and that's it. We have. I love how you have this big lobby in the middle with this big kind of like. Like a little pond. All right, so that's it for that. That's it for the Team Rocket, uh, not Team Rocket Hideout, Self Company. That is a big, uh, what you call it, story thing out of the way. Um, so now the question is, where do we want to go next? I think because we have a few more badges to get. We have the badge in Saffron City. We have the badge in Cinnabar Island. And we have another badge in a city that uh, we'll find out later. Um, for now, if you look to like the east on this map, there's kind of like a big, yes. There's a thing, there's a long white route there on the east kind of under Lavender Town that we'll go to. I kind of talked about it earlier. I'm gonna pop a few things into the PC. Um, let's deposit, um, I'm going to keep my great balls. I'm going to deposit the card key because we don't need that anymore. I'll deposit this swords dance TM because we don't need that anymore. There we go. Do I need to heal the squad still? Yes, I do. So there, this long route south of Lavender Town, there are just a ton of trainers and that loops, uh, it doesn't loop, it goes all the way down and then across to the west, um, all the way to Fuchsia City. And this is a route in this game that you can always run through to just fight a bunch of trainers and get a bunch of levels. Their levels aren't like extremely high. I'm gonna sell this X accuracy really quick because we're probably not gonna use it. Uh, I'm gonna get me some super potions because I like to have them. Couple revives is always useful. Um, and I think we're good for now. Maybe I'll get more super repels. Ten more. Okay. So we can make our way down here. I think I mentioned it earlier. And this is just a little house. We have another little kind of set of binoculars up here. Aw, my Pokemon's ashes are stored in Pokemon Tower. <laughs> you can have this TM, I don't need it anymore. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. <laughs> what is it? Does she say? Ah, oh, a move called Swift. It's very accurate, so use it during battles you can't afford to lose. Um, Swift is an attack that can't miss. Um, so yes, we see a man fishing. And we see it's Pokemon Tower, yeah. Um, I think in one of those little upper areas in these little kind of checkpoint houses there. But, da -da. This is great music. Um, in one of those little checkpoint houses, I think there is a trade or two. Yeah, there are a couple people in this game where you can trade... Um, Pokemon for specific Pokemon. There's actually one, I think I showed off, where he will trade you a Machoke if you give him a Cubone. Um, and Machoke is a Pokemon that only evolves when you trade it, so he's basically trading you the evolved form of Machoke. That's kind of just the, the game saying, like, we'll throw you a bone here, player. Um, throw you a bone, player. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, our levels are a bit above what we're gonna see here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Loctus. Um, because in theory, we can fight these people right when we get to Lavender Town, so they're kind of in like the low, mid-twenties. <laughs> Throw your bone, play a play. Um, so yeah. These levels are kind of always like in the middle, like 20s, 30s area. They're not going to be anything too crazy. Again, they really kind of exist to kind of help you catch your levels and, and uh, grow a little bit. Because there's just a ton over here. I'm going to surf to this little island. Grab this item. What are you? TM-16. What is that? Um, I'm still reeling over that poor girl whose Pokemon's ashes are at Pokemon Tower. Um, and this will help us get some more levels on my wife because we can fight these uh, fishermen and have super effective damage. Not here, because a tentacle is part poison. But it might still... Uh, no, actually. You see, this is something else that we ran into with Koga and my wife is that when Pokemon have two types in this game, it doesn't function like it does in later games. It will be either super effective or not very effective just against one of the types. It's really weird. Doesn't really make sense. Like there, um, in a later game, I would have hit that tentacle for neutral damage, but in this game, since it calculates really weird, it was still not very effective damage. Which is just another Gen 1 thing. Um, but my wife is only four levels away from evolving. I can't remember if we still have the Leaf Stone in our bag. Um, because we can we could have evolved our wife as soon as we got the Leaf Stone. But I just want to learn a move before we do that. And, oh yeah, it looks like I deposited it. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and grab that when we get to... Oh, hello when we get to level 38. So we're gonna fight a few of these fishermen. But how's everybody's day going? I hope it's going well. Um, I've been able to be productive, ran a few errands this morning even though I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Got my hair cut, as you can kind of tell. She cut my hair a bit shorter than I wanted her to. Um, Good, doing, oh, doing some drawing, very nice. I love that. I Drawing is a skill that I wish I, hair looks good, thank you so much. Um, that I wish I could cultivate more, but I have too many other <laughs> interests to keep track of and I uh, just don't ever practice. Um, because I respect animation so much. Um, as I've gotten older, I've really... You can't have all the talents. Well, thanks. Um, I really respect animation. Um, I love it a lot. We... I am watching Attack on Titan right now. And I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but it is an incredible show. It is so intense. It makes me so very sad all the time. But... Also, if anybody sees this, don't spoil me. I'm not that far in. Um, Shelder. Oh, we'll go to my wife. So good and so devastating. You are so right. Um, we also finished a show called Scavenger's Reign that, again, I don't remember if I've mentioned before. So good. I think it was an HBO original. It's not an anime. It's just an animated show. Um, and it is so wonderful. Um, very kind of like existential and deep. Um, again, pretty sad. <laughs> um, I guess I've just been on that a lot recently. Ooh, a horsey. Oh yeah, we saw a horsey in Misty's gym a while back. The bad thing about wife's moves is they don't have a lot of power points. Um, really trying to get her up and going. Um, but yeah, animation, drawing... Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And... Uh, what else did I do today? Yes, I got my hair cut. I felt really bad. So here's the other Snorlax. There are two Snorlax in the game. And we caught the first one. This is the other one. I do just kind of want to show... 
what happens when you don't catch it. Lovely. Snorlax woke up. It attacked in a grumpy rage. Um, but yeah, I think my... It was a new person today at my barber shop. And I think she was pretty recently out of... Uh, I almost said culinary school. Cosmetology school, that's it. So you can just run from the Snorlax and not fight it. And it'll just... Oh, it didn't even say! Oh, wow! Usually, I think when you defeat it... Um, uh, sorry, I boofed that. When you defeat it, <laughs> it'll say, like, Snorlax went back to the mountains. And I'm like, that's lovely. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think she was pretty recently... And this will lead us to Vermilion City, that little route to the side of Vermilion City by Diglett's Cave, which is pretty cool. And... It took her, like, a hundred thousand years to do everything. And, like, God bless her. She was just making sure she did her best and she did a very nice job. I'm very symmetrical. Um, but something that usually takes me 25 minutes took, like, a full hour. Um, which is, you know, it's fine. Again. She did a good job. Um, but, ha. Uh, Yes, we'll go into, we'll go into Bony. Show off that earthquake. This earthquake will just annihilate this Voltorb. Mmm. One of the best moves in the game. Right there. That thing just dove toward the ground. It got killed so hard. Um, Electrode, we'll just stay in. Because another earthquake will really do the trick. Okay, I was really happy that it did not explode there. Because that's really what Voltorb and Electrode are known for. Yeah, they don't really give them any electric moves in this game. Because they're like, their purpose is to blow up at this point. Du -du -du. Ah, this house is a pretty important house. Um, something that we can get earlier in the game, I don't even remember where to get it or where we would have gotten it. But this guy, in this game there is an old rod that you can only use to catch Magikarp. There is a good rod that catches some good Pokemon, and then this guy gives you the Super Rod. The Super Rod. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> And it can catch some of, like, the better Pokemon that you can fish up and that have, uh, that are at a bit of a higher level. So we're not really going to use that. I will show it off for you once. Let's see. Well, let me show you how a Super Rod works. <laughs> Sorry. Let me show you how a Super Rod works. That is disgusting! Ash, use Super Rod. And he just fishes... So cute. Yeah, this has not even a nibble. Usually you can catch Pokemon, obviously. Um, and let's see. Ah, yes. Oh, I don't have anything that knows cut. I don't remember what that item is right there. I think it's just like a protein or like another good vitamin. Um, if we really want to come back for it, we can. Um, <laughs> Master Ball Super Rod. You're so right. Wow. What a perverted game we're playing. Um, oh yeah, this guy asks about a Moonstone. That's a good little hint from the game that I enjoy. Um, he asks about a Moonstone because he has Pokemon that can evolve via a Moonstone. And I guess, you know, back in the day before the internet and everybody knew everything about everything, um, that would be a good little hint from the game, being like, oh, these Pokemon must evolve with that Moonstone I found in Mount Moon. Let me try to evolve my Nidorino with a Moonstone. What else does he say? Ow! <laughs> uh, he says something else about it. I could have made my Pokemon evolve with Moonstone. Yes, exactly what I was saying. Nice little, nice little hint. Nice little hint drop. Um... Let's get the squad up to level 34. We got everybody in the squad up there. And then we might make a stop over to the gym in Saffron City. Not the fighting gym, but the proper gym. 
Um, I think she... Oh, no, she has Goldines. So that's not a great matchup for Keith Angel, but... We can just bite it. Yeah, it does. It does plenty. That'll do the trick. Two hit KO. Easy peasy. Um, let's see. Ooh, 666. Spooky. Um, I'll stay in. Mm. Bite can flinch. That would have been lovely. But again, it doesn't really matter. This Poliwag's not much of a threat to our fully grown, scary Keith Angel. Um, Horsey, let me go out to my wife. Because grass Pokemon in a lot of Pokemon games, I do love them. Grass is probably one of my... is probably in my upper tier of types. I like a lot of grass Pokemon. But the type is not particularly versatile. So you really only use it when it has the type matchup, like against a water type in this case. Um, so I want to make sure I'm using my wife as much as possible. There we go. Three more levels. Let's do it. Ooh, I can't wait for you to see my wife's final form. Da, 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 da. Um, so yeah, there are still plenty of trainers on this route that we can come back and fight if we want to. Um, uh, yes, a lot of bird trainers out here. Um, but once we get those two mons over to level 34, we'll move on in the story a little bit. Because I don't want to be boring y'all with just trainer battles all day long. Um, but what else is going on? Tonight, we have... We are seeing an improv show, which I'm pretty excited about. We have some friends in an improv group here in town. I was actually in an improv group with these friends back when we were in college. Um, they just stuck with it. I didn't. I wasn't a particularly great improviser. I had fun. Um, but it was kind of like... It really helped me be a little more well-rounded as an actor back when I was doing that more in my life. Um, and I obviously made some very lovely friends. So I'm excited to see them tonight. I think they just started doing this weekly show um, kind of north of downtown in Columbus. They're called Rot, Rot Improv. So if you see this and you live in the Columbus, Ohio area, see Rot Improv. Or just follow them on social media if you don't. That'd be very nice. I'll give them a plug. Um, so let's see here. Got our boy Copter just destroying these Pidgeys. Yeah, this, uh, I think she has, like, yeah, she has a lot of Pokemon. Um, but yeah, the group we were in together in school was Fishbowl Improv, actually. There we go. Oh, you're seeing the new Dune tomorrow. Very cool. I did not see the first Dune. I love the director of those movies, uh, Denis Villeneuve, I believe that's how you say his name. Um, like, Prisoners is a great movie, Sicario is a great movie, um, Blade Runner 2049 is a great movie. So I do need to catch up on that. My wife and I have just not gone, let me just take down, nice. Um, just like cinematic, love that. Um, that's what I hear about the new one too. I hear the new one is like incredible. Um, so we'll see. I do really want to catch both of them. Um, there's a lot, ton of good actors in it as well. Um, very exciting. And uh, oh yeah, I was saying the improv group we were in was called Fishbowl Improv over at the Ohio State University. Um, so over here you have this weird section with all these fences. There's like a little fence maze. Um, fight this junior trainer. Uh, she's got water types. Not very good for my Aerodactyl, but I should be fine if I just use Fly. Um, the Osters are coming up too. Um, very into the Oscars as an actor. Um... Let's see, Poliwag again. We'll just stay in because Copter's got to get get a level or two. Um, 
We haven't seen too many of the nominated movies. We've seen a good chunk. Uh, we saw The Boy and the Heron, a beautiful animated movie. We saw Studio Ghibli. We saw uh, Past Lives, um, which was actually really annoying because we watched it and the subtitles were off, so that kind of like ruined our experience. Um, but fun fact, one of the guys in Past Lives I was in Carol with, which was really cool. Um, we, the holdovers, we loved the holdovers. Um, it's kind of really meant to be like a throwback 70s, oh, minimize, yes. Minimize makes it so that our attacks miss more often. Um, that swift TM that we just got from that girl would have come in handy because swift never misses. Um, uh, yeah, so we saw the holdovers. Um, which is probably my favorite so far. Ugh, raising its evasiveness more, which is extremely annoying, as you can see. So I'm gonna kind of speed through this a little bit because we're just gonna be missing a ton. Ugh, come on, hit! No! That's four stages now. Oh, uh, five stages! Oh no! Oh no! I cannot hit this thing! Six stages?! Ooh. I mean, it can't do anything to me, <laughs> so it's not a huge deal, but I'm just speeding through this bad boy. Oh my gosh, <laughs> and now I'm asleep. Um, I have missed, what is that, like 10 in a row? Oh, I was about to say, that was so slow. Um, and I just moved to wing attack instead of... Um, fly because fly takes two turns and it was just like why take two turns to miss there we go why take two turns to miss when you can just take one um, okay great very happy that part's over um, meow so I'm gonna go into Hitmonlee and just annihilate it just out of pure spite at this point um, but yeah the holdovers was good um, poor things we saw which was very very good um, love Emma Stone she's a favorite actress of mine um let's see let's fight this other beauty and then we'll move on to saffron city um poor things was another favorite a very kind of like you know that director is really known for kind of like weird movies and poor things isn't not weird but i think it's actually very way easier to get your arms around than people realize it's not that like complicated to follow. It's a pretty um, concise look at like autonomy, um, which is really cool, especially for women. I mean, specifically for women, um, which I really liked. Um, and then we watched, ooh, we watched American Fiction. Mark Ruffalo, yes, Mark Ruffalo was so fun in Poor Things. He just plays just the biggest <laughs> idiot in the world. He's so funny. Um, we'll just stay in the key things here. Just annihilate it with a surf and wash him away. But, uh, yeah, that was really good. And we saw American Fiction as well, um, which is about a writer um, who is black. And he's frustrated because... Um, uh, publishers don't really want to publish his books because they're not, quote, black enough. Um, so he writes what he considers to be, like, a super stereotypical, like, black book. And just, pretty much just to stick it to him and just out of spite. And then everyone just thinks it's great. And he's like, what? Um, it's really good. And has a lot of good, like, family life drama. Really good movie. Um, so we can work our way through that route a little more, um... We still really want to see Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, but pretty much Holdovers, Poor Things, and American Fiction are probably my favorites that we've seen. We saw Barbie and Oppenheimer earlier this year, and we really loved both of those two. Um, I think Oppenheimer's really going to kind of like sweep for the most part, as I understand it. It's really been knocking out a lot of the awards season stuff. Um... But, uh, oh yeah, let me throw that TM in the old, in the old PC. Let's see. Oh yeah, the Super Rod. We're not really going to 
use the super rod. Um, <laughs> and finally you. I'll keep the master ball. Oops, no. There we go. Um, but I think really the biggest like race that isn't like kind of already decided is the best actress race. It's really between Emma Stone in Poor Things, I think she had a great performance, and Lily Gladstone in Killers of the Flower Moon, which is like the big one that we still haven't seen. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Finally watching that. Definitely want to watch that before the Oscars. Um, so here is the Saffron City Gym. And there are warp panels, just like the Silk Company. Oh, here's another kind of like weird Gen 1 thing. Listen to the music here. When I start walking into the wall and you hear like those little bump noises from bumping into the wall, it will actually kind of like take out a part of the music. Just listen. Yeah, it cuts out like one of the little like one of the parts in the music, which is really cool. Just an interesting little Gen 1 detail for you. I think that probably happens in, I think that happens in Gen 2 as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's see. So we have all these psychic type trainers in here. And I think, yes, he's got some slow poke and slow bro, which is perfect fodder for our gal Eve to just rock them with some thunderbolts. I will actually bring in my wife just for the slow poke. Uh, even though a, a psychic move will hurt a little bit, and I decided not to use one, love to see it. Um, just more silly AI decisions. Oh, that is so great. Back to full health. And yes, and then slow bro is gonna be a bit more powerful, so we're gonna go back out to that thunderbolt. Um, yeah, it's very weird. We've seen a shelter in this game, and Slowpoke evolves by catching a shelter on its tail, but then the shelter turns into that weird thing that doesn't look anything like a shelter. Um, I think at one point it might... Oh, wow, that did not kill it. Um, it might be for Generation 2. They planned on, like, making whatever that Pokemon is supposed to be um, into its own Pokemon, but they never did it. So for this gym, I think uh, we'll have just enough time to get through the trainers in here and then maybe get our sixth badge, which is very exciting. And that'll probably be around the end of our stream today. But I'm just having a grand old time. Just, I think I described earlier, Saturday during the day is just a great time in my heart to play video games. That's just when I want to do it. Um, and again, those uh, these Ghastlies here, any fighting or um, normal move will not affect them. So you really need to use special moves against ghosts. And, okay, good. I really did not want that to hit, which is lovely. There we go, Eve. Okay, and then a Haunter. So here we'll go into Boney, because while Haunter is a ghost type, also a poison type, an earthquake will just wipe it off the face of the earth, hopefully. Don't paralyze me, good. Um, Lick can paralyze you. Um, in other, in later generations, like Haunter and Gengar will get the Levitate ability, which makes it so that ground moves can't hit them. So that kind of eliminates um, the ground weakness on them, which is really cool. Uh, we'll go into Copter, because Copter, uh, a thing about Psychic Pokemon is that they are really, really powerful in this generation and their special stats are really high. 
but their defense stats are pretty low. That's kind of where the weakness is. And like, as, as we'll probably see with this cadaver here, like let's just hit it with a takedown. Um, this will probably kill it in one shot. Yeah, because Aerodactyl has a really high attack and Kadabra, like I just said, specifically Abracadabra Alakazam, that line, um, they have pretty weak defense stats. Slowpoke, however, is a lot bulkier. Um, I think another fly should do the trick. Oh, it did not. Okay, good. I'm glad it decided not to use a water move, which is great. Because even though our Aerodactyl cannot learn any Rock-type moves, it is indeed part Rock-type. Ah, uh, yes, here's Mr. Mime. Oh, Mr. Mime is another Pokemon that you can get in an in-game trade. Um, if you catch a Clefairy in Mount Moon, you can go and trade it. Um, it's in a little house after you go through Diglett's Cave. Um, once you get through there, you can trade a Clefairy for a Mr. Mime. And it, it, Mr. Mime is a pretty powerful Pokemon. It is a lot like Abracadabra or Alakazam, where you can just uh, launch some really powerful psychic attacks with it. But it's defense again, as you saw. Not super great. So in this gym, all I ever do is just walk straight across to the next panel. Um, as a kid, I discovered that that is a way that you can do this gym, so that's just how I do it every time. Um, okay, I'm going into Titus. Uh, psychic moves are going to be super effective against him. Yeah, I'm going to switch out immediately. <laughs> Because I'm expecting the slow bro to launch like a devastating psychic on me. I'll go into Eve and use that Thunderbolt. Not oh, great. Because while Hitmonlee's strength will do pretty good damage against psychic types, psychic type moves will just annihilate it in return. Oh, wow! I guess it did lower my attack a bit, didn't it? Um, let's see. Be -do 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 -do. I love how the Pokeballs are like floating around the Psychic. Um, I think, yes, there's another, ah, crap. It's a Ghost Trainer. As I was just saying, my boy Hitmonlee has no moves that can hit a Ghastly. Literally cannot hit it. <laughs> so that's fun. And again, Nightshade will always do 34 damage when it's launched from a Ghastly like this. So I wasn't in any jeopardy of dying, but that does do a good little chunk. Nice. Back out of the red health. So we do not need to hear that annoying music anymore. Um, we'll let Keith Angel handle this Haunter. Launch some Surfs here. Oh, let's use our handy dandy notebook. Bang! For all of you Blues Clues fans out there. Uh, but I meant to say handy dandy Poké Flute. He really just wants to keep doing some annoying stuff on me here. Okay, alright. Really had some trolley stuff happen this episode. Okay, good. Was about to get frustrated, gang. Hitting myself in confusion is like my least favorite thing in these games. It's so annoying. Um, I think we've... Oh, no. Not this. I think this might be the last trainer in this gym that we fight. Um, ooh, this is a good matchup. I love this. Let's see if Hitmonlee can knock out Mr. Mime in like one shot. Um, oh, no, two. Ah, barrier. Uh, barrier is a great move for a psychic type because, like I said, their defense their defense is low. Um, so that really helps it uh, fortify itself against a physical attacker like Hitmonlee. But to no avail. It really should have just attacked me regularly. But they stupid. What are you going to do? Um, okay, good. I'm really glad we're faster. Nice shot, Titus! You see, Titus is starting to pull his weight now. He was terrible early on. Deeply terrible. Um, ah, crap. 
I really thought we had fought everybody in here. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm really messing this up, huh? Um, we'll go into Eve. Launch some Thunderbolts here. Um... Biddly diddly. Haunter's going... Ooh, the Haunter looks so cool when it, like, reverses the color palette like that. Um, very nice. So yeah, these levels are just a bit over us, but not, like, crazy. That's really annoying that it has... Ooh, Dream Eater. Dream Eater is a really powerful move. Um, it's actually a Psychic-type move. When he, like, if this... I don't know why it's using it now, because it can't work under these circumstances. But when a Haunter, for example, puts you to sleep, it can use the move Dream Eater. And that will, it's like Mega Drain, but it's a really powerful psychic move. So you do damage and gain uh, hit points in return when you use it. So Dream Eater is a really good move. It just takes some setup. Um, yes, we fought her already. So now we'll just go across every warp panel until we get to our girl in the middle, Sabrina. Um, kind of a legendary gym leader. A lot of people's favorites. I'm not gonna even gonna go heal. I'm just gonna go right in. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna heal with potions. I'm not crazy. Um, but uh, Sabrina is a psychic type gym leader. She famously just destroys Ash in the anime the first time that they fight each other. Um, the way that it went in the anime is Ash fights Sabrina, gets rocked, and then he goes to Pokemon Tower and he catches a Haunter and he uses that Haunter to defeat Sabrina. Um, so that's, that's how it went in the anime. That's not how it goes in the games. Even in this game, that's like inspired by the anime. Um, but here, uh, Sabrina has three Pokemon. We're going to start with Copter. Let me hit a save here just in case she annihilates us. I had a vision of your arrival. I have had psychic power since I was a child. I first learned to bend spoons with my mind. I dislike fighting, but if you wish, I will show you my powers. Here comes the greatest track ever made. Thank you. Uh, she has a whip in this game. I don't know why. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah, that is a bop. You are correct. Um, so this will probably be the last thing we do this stream. So hopefully we don't die. Oh yeah, this is Abra. This is the first form of Kadabra, which is so clever. Um, it's very weak. And yeah, see that killed it in one shot. It was a critical hit though. Um, so that's her first Pokemon, but her other two Pokemon are far better. Um, let's see. She has Kadabra now, and they are all at level 50. So they can really, really mess us up here. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay in with Copter here. Um, I think... Oh, Recover. You see... Uh, oh, wow, it must have been a speed tie. Um... When it is a speed tie, either Pokemon can go first, and that actually really worked out in my favor because it went first when I was still up in the air. Um, that was a really cool little thing. Um, ooh, an X defend. Kind of smart, but this will probably still kill it. Um, but yeah, another weird Gen 1 thing that she just did was she... Oh, not quite. Okay, great. Um, she used Recover when she was at full health, which is really stupid. Um, and Psy Wave... Psychic is very powerful. Psy Wave is very not. And sometimes she uses Psy Wave. That's the TM she gives at the end. Um, here, my strategy is to switch into Keith Angel. Ooh, look at that sprite. I love how the spoon covers his eye like that. Um, Alakazam is one of the strongest Pokemon in the game. Um, so if the AI wasn't terrible, Sabrina would be very difficult. Um... I mean, this still is gonna hurt. But I wanted to have Keith Angel come in because Keith Angel has some high special defense. Oh, boy. That still did a lot of damage, kids. 
Um, we're gonna go into Titus, because any psychic move is just gonna annihilate him, other than Psywave. Because Psywave is weird, because it is a psychic attack, but it only... Wow. That's like the most I've ever seen that move do. But it does like a random amount of damage, which is weird. Like it could do a very little amount. It did a lot last time. Okay, I spoke too soon. It just destroyed Hitmonlee. Um, so here we're gonna go back into Copter. See if we can really smash this bad boy with a fly. Mm. Reflect. Oh boy, I do love this though. She's actually really making plays. The AI isn't so terrible right now. Another X defend? Yeah, that's gonna be hard to bust through. She's setting up on us, gang. That did nothing. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna use agility. So hopefully I can outspeed the Alakazam now. Please don't kill me. Another thing about Alakazam is that it can get critical hits. Mm, boopy. Okay. Um, because it's very fast. And in this game, critical hits are determined by your speed. Um, and that's why I was going to use agility, so I could outspeed it. Ah, what I am going to do is use Thunder Wave to paralyze it. and make See, Psy Wave didn't do a lot that time. And paralyze it so I can um, hit first. Okay, I think, I think we're going to be able to pull this out. But I really like that she's given us a good, a good battle here. Um, and as you can see, when they're not, when the gym leaders aren't stupid, Alakazam is one of the strongest Pokemon in the game. Um, as you can see, just annihilates my Jolteon. I am a little under leveled, but dang, we're gonna, we're gonna let my wife get the kill. Come on. She's a beautiful lady. She's a beautiful lady. That's why I married her. What can I say? Um, there we go. Ash defeated Sabrina. That was a good fight! We were a little underleveled. That kind of made it a bit tougher. I love that. Um, uh, that's so great, because playing these games so much, um, like I have in my life, uh, it's good to have a fun challenge. Um, wait, please take this TM with you. Psywave, I'm not going to use that at all. Sorry, Sabrina. Um, to inflict damage. She says something cute, I think. Everyone has psychic power. People just don't realize it. Oh, thanks, Sabrina. Um, well, that was a lovely battle. And with that, I think I'm going to call the stream here. This was delightful. Thank you for joining me today. If you are watching on the Silver Cave Gaming YouTube channel, thank you for watching. Really appreciate that. Um, what else? You can, bye! Um, you can subscribe there. You can follow me here on Twitch. Oh, you can follow my band, Silver Cave Band. I'm gonna have some releases very soon. Um, watch Carol. <laughs> I'll always say that for the, for the rest of my life. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for watching this. So fun. Can't wait to continue Pokemon Yellow next time. Peace, kids.